Hello my friends, my name is Tim Johnson. In this video today, I just wanna give you a few quick tips and techniques that I use when I'm feeling, for whatever reason, sometimes for no reason at all, a bit low, a bit down, um, restless, irritable, discontent, if you like, all's not well with the world, uneasy, depressed. Uh, you know, all these things are all part of life, whether you're sober or not sober, you know, it's, um, but in sobriety, obviously, and particularly early sobriety, things are magnified. And uh, us alcoholics and addicts, and I know myself, love a bit of drama and love a bit of, um, I don't know, self-pity, if you like, and self-hatred. And so if you're feeling in that sort of low spirits and for, for whatever reason, it can be quite dangerous unless you alter your state of consciousness, if possible. And, def and deflect that feeling and uh, get your mind off it. Because if your mind starts to run away with you and makes pictures, as it inevitably will, you'll be full of fear all of a sudden. You'll be projecting into the future. You'll be frightened to leave the house even sometimes. You know, it, it can really magnify until you're in such a, a low state. You find it very difficult to dig yourself out and you may well reach for a drink or a drug and think that that's the solution, which it obviously isn't. You know, being sober takes daily, sometimes hourly, minutely. <laughs> By the minute work sometimes, you have to take action. You have to put work in to get those benefits out, you know. And I've got now a life that I didn't see that was possible uh, even a few months ago. And it's because I've surrendered to my addiction, but it's also because I'm using these techniques I'm going to share with you often on a daily basis. And sometimes, you know, by the minute and by the hour, even if I'm not, if I'm not feeling right. And it's really important to keep your thinking on the right track because it can lead you, it certainly leads me down to, um, down some dark alleyways. And it leads me back into sort of ego and self-seeking. It takes me out of the moment as well, as I say. And when I'm out of the moment, when I'm not in, you know, in the present moment, I'm looking back into the past at regret and, and, and anger and resentment, which is absolutely useless emotions. And there's no need for that. And also projecting into the future um, and painting pictures, which... Scenarios which never happen, and I said in the last video, you know, most of the worst things in our life happen in our imagination, and that's a very true saying. So you can wake up at any time, like I say, sober or not sober, early sobriety or 20, 30 years into sobriety, and feel that uh, things aren't well with you in the world, you know, uneasy and restless, particularly in the current climate. God knows we've We've all got a lot, a lot to deal with at the moment with worry about, you know, we've had the last two years of COVID, we've got climate change, disasters all over the place, and we've got now a, a war in Ukraine, which is, a, you know, a disgrace, and, and, and um, it fills you full of worry. It fills you full of worry for your family and for your future. And so to avoid your head going down these avenues, it's good to, to practice some certain techniques. And, you know, one way that I change my consciousness every single day without fail, and there's a video on the channel on it, so please have a look. Well, there's several videos actually on it. I think one's the most watched video on the channel. And that's the Wim Hof method and um, breathing techniques. I mean, if you, and if you don't like those, there are yogic breathing techniques, pranayama and uh, meditation te breathing techniques, which will do the same sort of thing and alter your consciousness. And, um, but the Wim Hof one does it, you know, instantaneously, if you like. You have to put work in. And also alongside that, there is a cold water therapy or cold therapy, if you like. Um, and that just means basically jumping in a, a cold shower. You can do that gradually over a period of time by getting into a sort of a warm shower and get, letting it go cold for 20 seconds and the next day increase it to 30 seconds until you're able to get in to a cold shower in the morning. What that does, it alters your state of consciousness. It's an incredible feeling. It's uh, alongside the breathing techniques, which you do before the cold shower, or I do anyway. Um, 
it, it really does push your mind away from all of that trouble. It energizes you. Uh, the cold will not only bring all sorts of benefits and, and also that consciousness, it will boost your immune system. Um, it will bring you uh, positivity and energy for the day, um, boost you and start your day in a, in a perfect way, if you like. Uh, that's one thing that I do on a daily basis. Another thing is um, my daily gratitude list. And I've talked about this hundreds of times. And I'm sure you all know uh, about gratitude. But it is the single best thing to do to alter your state of consciousness. In other words, it doesn't matter how down you're feeling. And by the way, all of everything I'm saying now, some of you out there might be suffering from, um, obviously, serious depression, the, uh, bipolar depression, serious that you're on medication for, um, or schizophrenia and various other mental illnesses, which, you know, are, are not really what this is aimed at. Although these techniques will help in a certain way, what I'm, I'm not saying is like ignore your, you know, treatments and seeing of uh, the psychiatrist or the doctor, whoever you're seeing, and your medication, because that's very important, obviously, if you have serious um, mental illness uh, but this is just for sort of day to day I mean I was I was diagnosed with depression and um, at one stage they said it was bipolar and I think it was more to do with the hole in my soul that I seemed to have from a very young boy which was more to do with addiction and pain I, I seem to, I seem to be sort of born with that hole in the soul if you like and um from a very early age, you know, uh, was, was stealing my mum's vodka and pills um, just to alter that my state of consciousness in that way to get through the day because I was so afraid of actually leaving the house or and certainly mixing with my peers and other people um, and to avoid and to be accepted because a, a lot of addicts and alcoholics like to be the centre of attention. You know, they, they like the drama that's around all of that. Um, although when everyone looks at them, they're frightened to death and, and hate it. <laughs> so to avoid that feeling of uh, fear and fright, they generally cover that up with um, pills and alcohol or whatever it is that you're into, whatever your addiction is to change the way you feel. What I did was use pills and alcohol to um, be the maddest and the baddest and the craziest, to be accepted by my peers. And that led on to, you know, where my life went and uh, into into catering and hotel and nightclub management, where again, it was all a performance and I wanted to be the centre of attention, but I was changing my consciousness with the alcohol and drugs. So when you finally get sober for years, you know, it might be years of abuse, it takes a long time to, um, A, for your brain to heal, there's gonna be massive spikes and periods of up and downness, um, but to learn to live and take action and, um, and, and use these techniques to maintain your daily sobriety. Um, and these techniques can be used whether, you know, whether you're trying to get sober or not. You know, even if you're just someone who suffers from anxiety or is feeling a little low or, or down, you know, or, you know, slightly depressed. Um, so the gratitude list, even if you, I mean, I remember early on in my sobriety, very early on, the first, the first times when I was told to do this, I sat there for ages looking at the piece of paper and pencil and I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything to write down, which is absolutely ludicrous now because I can't stop writing now. And, you know, you have to start somewhere and, and you start, you know, I always start with, you know, if, you've, if you're lucky enough to have any relatives, to be, to be thankful for, for having those people, someone who, you know, cares about you, having someone there, um, thanking for your health, you know, whatever state it is, you're still alive. Thank you for that health. Thank you for your family's health. And start from that sort of point of view. And then it leads on to hundreds of, you know, hundreds of things on a daily basis, you know, down for having your needs met, having a roof over your head, bed to sleep in, clothes to wear, food in your fridge, if you're lucky enough to have food in your fridge, um, running water from a tap to washing to, you know, and just sometimes I wake up and do a, the first thing I do when I wake up is take a big deep breath and smile and say, um, Thank you, boss, for uh, giving me another day above ground. You know, something as simple as that starts the day off in a, in, a, in a positive way. And that's tongue in cheek, but I do do that every morning, you know, and, um, 
and the gratitude list I do every morning and without fail and a journal to write down my thoughts and feelings all really important because it does alter the way you feel and you can reprogram and rewire your brain neuroplasticity it's called by doing these things and these techniques on a daily basis and then of course there are um, one of the most important things of all when you're feeling a little low and feeling like this is connection and um, connection via any support group that you happen to be in which is my my thing I mean I, I mix on a daily basis and learn on a daily basis from people who have many 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 more years of sobriety than me but not that's one important really what I, what I learned from is that is being in um, and mixing with people who uh, I see so many similarities with um, and, and think the same way as I do um, and we all you know we learn from each other but that connection however you make that connection whether it is with support groups um, and you're constantly talking to, to people and learning and you feel you've got that safety net of support that's massively important at any stage of your sobriety and throughout you know it'll ne you'll never be able to leave that you need that for forever basically you need that that safety net that fellowship that um and however you find that is up to you you know whether it, whether it's in in a, a group, an organized group like i go to you know a a c a n a um or whether it's in um smart recovery whether it's in uh counseling professionals whether it's just your friends that you can trust and um your family you know it's important to share i share on a daily basis and when i do share i um whoever i share it with and i sometimes share many times a day um I feel a massive uh, sense of relief because that alters my consciousness. And if I'm feeling low, you know, inevitably whoever I, I'm sharing that with will have felt the same way. And we share about how you move away from that, those feelings. And, um, you know, it's just really important not to bottle all those feelings up inside of yourself because, uh, you know, it can lead you down. If you're an addict or an alcoholic, you know, it can lead you down um a, the path into relapse it's, it's simple as that if you're not dealing with it on a daily basis because you're gonna have you know life happens and shit happens as they say you know it's up and down and up and down and up and down and um it's okay not to be okay i think i think everyone thinks that when you when you get sober you know uh, every day is like a pink the pink cloud everyone talks about you know this euphoria of you know i've maybe have drunk for years i've binged for years or whatever you've done you know, oh, it's behind me and all that. But, it, you know, it, it really isn't. You've got to put bloody tons of work in every day, probably for the rest of your life, you know, to remain in that condition and to remain in a peaceful and um, calm and serene state, which I feel most of the time, I have to tell you, because I'm doing this stuff, you know, and when I don't feel right, first of all, you know, I know that that's okay, but I'll deal with it. I don't let it fester. I deal with it as soon as I feel those feelings and, and using, using the techniques. And of course, the simple things when you're feeling like that. I mean, even going for a 20 minute walk in nature. Being in nature, there's something about nature. Obviously, we are part of a, a massive um, whole, aren't we? You know, in this universe we live in. And we are nature. We are part of nature. And to be in amongst it, literally um, gives you a calming energy immediately you're amongst it you know and if you're lucky enough to live in the countryside then great get out for a 20 minute walk even a 20 minute walk more if you can in the fresh air or some form of exercise in the fresh air where there's daylight doesn't matter if there's no sun if the sun it's even better of course and um, some walk barefoot on the grass because that's important but being amongst trees and and even if you live in a city, there are parks where you can be amongst nature and just sit there and take a breath and check in on yourself and just say the words in this moment, everything is perfect. Because when you check that, you generally it is, you know, and um, sometimes if you've got a lot of stuff going on at home, you know, you need, you need these breaks so you're able to deal with it. 
in a much more effective way. And certainly you're able to deal with it in a more effective way when you're sober. There's no doubt about that because um, people do go through some horrendous things. You know, it's all right me glibly saying, do this, do this, do this. But God forbid if you've just had a, a death in the family or you've lost your house or you don't know where the next penny's coming from to heat or eat or Christ knows what else. You're thinking, well, how am I ever going to get out of this? But there is a way. There has to, there has to you know, there's a way to start moving forward. You have to. Because if you don't, the alternative's unthinkable, isn't it? Because to live in that pain and to, um, to go back to addiction and, and, and using and drinking and all the rest of it again will only lead to death. And then you're not, no good to anyone, your loved ones, you know, or, or anyone at all, you know, and it, life's precious. You shouldn't do that. So that's a few techniques I use. And of course, you know, if you're putting good stuff into your body, and I bang on about this time and time again, but I listen and I, I look online at some of the groups I'm in online, you know, uh, people when they first get sober. And it is difficult when you first get sober because there's a, a big link between sugar addiction and um, alcohol, for instance, you know. And when you lose the alcohol, you do crave. And I talked about cravings in the last video, so have a look at that. But you do crave sugar, but... There comes a point when um, what you put into your body is so important for your mental, not just your physical well-being, your energy, but your mental well-being, not just your alertness, for your sleep, for your mood, for all of that, everything you put into your body affects it. So, and people say, oh, it's dear, it's dear to eat like that, you know, it's dear to eat lots of fresh fruit and vegetables and good nutrition and the rest of it. Well, if you shop around and go to small fruit shops, you know, no one's saying buy organic all the time, like if you can't afford it, but you can eat a really good balanced, healthy diet on a, you know, on a, at a reasonable price. And at the end of the day, before that, you were spending all your money on booze and drugs and Christ knows what else, gambling or whatever your thing was or your addiction was, you know, and use that money that you're saving to feed yourself good nutrition, you know, and to treat yourself now and again to nice stuff, to travel, to do all the nice things in life, to buy presents for your family and stuff that I never did when I was in um, addiction because every penny that I had or, or stole or scrounged or everything else went to feed my addiction because I went to any lengths to feed it. So you should go to any lengths for your sobriety. That's what's important. So altering your state of consciousness in whatever way you can. And then, of course, prayer and meditation, extremely important. Whatever you're No one's saying, um, banging on about religion or anything else. Whatever your thing is, it's fine. You know, meditation and prayer go hand in hand sometimes. And spending time doing that and using the correct breathing techniques while you're doing it will alter your state of consciousness and will bring you peace you know, and, and that even that time alone, using that time alone will do that for you. Um, so there's just a few little things. Um, I mean, there are, there, are, there are more things, you know, a daily routine is really important, you know, and sticking to that routine, even down to making your bed in the morning and, and, and showering and having a wash, all the things that you never used to do um, when you were in addiction, you know, it's really important to have those things into your daily routine. But I think the most important of everything I've mentioned what is the connection, is having connection. Because as addicts and alcoholics, we tend to isolate. I know towards the end of my uh, drinking and drug taking, I was just shut in a dark room, waiting to die, taking uh, drugs and drinking alcohol. And the only time I ever left that room was to try and get my hands on more of it. So don't get yourself in that, ever get yourself in that position. Unless you've already been in it, you'll know what I mean then. Um, Always try and keep connected to people and keep talking to people, whatever groups you're in. It doesn't matter. Each to their own. You know, we're all, you know, perfectly imperfect, as I always say. So I hope that's been of some help for you. And Carpe Diem, seize the day. Much love to you all. Stay strong. The world's in a shitty place at the moment. But, you know, if we all come together, everyone comes together um, and, wants, and wants peace and goodness and projects peace, goodness, and kindness, and compassion, then that has a massive knock-on effect. So try to do that on a daily basis. 
Much love. Thank you. Bye-bye.